I went back and I was like, okay, what makes me me that I want to tell everybody about? So I went, and there's this one quote by an author named Douglas Adams, he's dead now, but he's one of my favorite authors of all time. He wrote Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and at Restaurant in the Universe and So Long Thanks for the Fish, which a lot of people don't know, but it's those are one of my favorite books. And I grew up with them, and my mom used to read them to me, and they just completely shaped how I live. <laughs> and, that explains which is, so much. explains a lot if you've ever read them or seen the movie or anything. But the quote is, everything you see or hear or experience in any way at all is specific to you. You create a universe by perceiving it. So everything in the universe you perceive is specific to you. And basically what it is, is that throughout your life, tons of people are going to tell you how to think and how to look at the world. And that's not fair. And I live by this because I see the world in just the strangest way. <laughs> like, some people just, you walk down the road and it's like, okay, well I'm going from point A to point B. No, you walk, when I walk down the road, I'm the kind of person that if I see like a squirrel running by, I will end up standing there for like 15 minutes watching a squirrel run up and down a tree. Okay, I'm not kidding you, I do it all the time. When I was little, not even when I was little, up in middle school we drove past fire stations, and I love fire trucks, I was so distracted. You can't just ignore your whole life. You have to take the time to look at the world around you and decide how you want to look at it. If you just kind of walk through and don't do anything, or just set a goal, go to that goal, and don't think about anything else on the way, it's just, you're going to reach like your mid-60s and you're going to be sitting in your living room somewhere going, what have I done with my life? No one wants to do that. And I just, I feel so lucky to have grown up in this town with the friends that I have, with the people that I go to school with, with my parents. Because if any of you have ever met my parents, they're a little bit out there. <laughs> um, my mom was raised by a professor of business philosophy who taught at Yale and started the first doctorate program in business at Case Western. And she grew up in a house built by a grad student where when college kids didn't know where they were supposed to be living or what they were supposed to be doing with their lives, they would live in her house. So she grew up surrounded by all of these just, these people that are doing thinking for a living. She grew up with all these strange ideas, and she made sure that she instilled that same thought in me and my brother. My dad grew up an only child going to boarding school in a really conservative family, and I've never seen anybody rebel the way he did. He <laughs> grew his hair as long, long as he could. He was textbook definition hippie. He raced motorcycles for almost two decades in the western part of the country. Like, these people, I mean, my parents are strange. Like, if you saw them on the street and you didn't know they were my parents, you'd turn around and walk the other way. <laughs> Mostly because you'd hear my mom coming. She's a short, loud woman. Um, but the way that she thinks just makes, makes you want to just have an open mind. It's like, when I was little, I asked, because my mom's a scientist, and I was really curious, when I was little, I asked my mom, why is the sky blue? And her answer, and I think about this every day, her answer was, maybe to some people it's not blue. Maybe to some people it's purple. It's not, why is it blue? It's, how do you see it? And from that point on, that's basically what I ask myself every day. And whenever I see, you know, when, for like English midterms and finals, you have to fill out that like standards where they like make you rate yourself. Mm -hmm. Every time I get to the creativity one, Based on that definition, I give myself like a one, because I don't believe that creativity is that definition. Creativity is coming up with your own original idea and then just 
putting it out there. Like, I don't want to be defined as comes up with original ideas in a variety of modalities. No. <laughs> I come up with my own ideas however I want to, <laughs> and I share them if I trust someone enough to share them. And most of you know I share a lot, so <laughs> clearly I trust all of you. <laughs> um, but just what I'm trying to say is before it's too late, don't close your mind. Like, it's like when you have a nice house with big open French doors, you don't want to close those if they have a nice view. And every view is nice. Every single one. I don't care what you have to say. If you don't agree, always listen to everything. Always look at everything because you're going to miss something, and you're going to regret it so much. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to do, was now that you've heard me talk, is I want to ask you guys, this is really weird, what is your favorite color and why? And I want you to actually think about why it's your favorite color. My favorite color is forest green, and that's because my favorite place to be in the world is <coughs> in the forest, because it's one of those places where you can close your eyes and you can just weep. You can hear an entirely different world around you. One of my favorite things to do is write, and every time I write, there's generally forests involved. <laughs> my bedroom is forest green. Half the things I own are forest green. It's just, you have to understand why you love that color. And I love it because it puts me at peace. And it makes me want to think. It makes me not want to miss anything else in my life. So, I don't know if anybody's thought about it, but does anybody want to tell me why they know why their favorite color is their favorite color? Ella? Um, my favorite color is green, but like more of a lighter green, so when I think of it, I feel like that's so open and it just gives me time to relax and be calm and it's just a peaceful color and it's not something that's like harsh to my eyes or I feel like it's kind of like in my face, it's just kind of there, it's really pretty and kind of underlying. That's good. Anybody else? Anybody's thinking about oh, no. the <laughs> but like I'm serious. You just take a second and you Holy just stop and you think about it and you realize like you have moments like that and people are like, wow, I didn't know that could happen, but it's true. It's like this is Burks. No, mine is green also, but mine is sage green. It's actually the color of my kitchen, and I have a. <coughs> Kind of a shabby little kitchen, really, but I have had I have so many good memories in my shabby circa 1977 kitchen that it's absolutely my favorite color. So, anybody else? See, sharing is good. Now you're looking at the world differently. I want everybody when they leave here to just take a second and like look at this school in a, through completely different eyes. Like, think of who you are now. Think of your opposite, and then look at your entire world for just one day as your complete opposite and see how they see it. Or think about how they would see it. It will completely change your view. 